Sheila, is there anything you want to say to the audience in our little pre-show here? <laughs> nope. I'm, I'm ready. I'm okay. ready, Teddy. Okay. You've done this before? Once. <laughs> well, experience. <laughs> well, I'm basically a professional now. Um, okay. Leota says, hi, Dr. Sheely. <laughs> Doc, you're live. Oh, we are now? Yes. We're going to have three games to make sure all works. Got it. Perfect. Oops. Well, let's uh, get started. We are live. Okay. Well, welcome. This is a wonderful Wellness Wednesday with uh, Dr. Shili and myself. And today we're going to talk about uh, something very interesting. Thyroid. Thyroid is one of those things that, uh, well, it controls, it's a little organ that controls a lot of things, every organ system. So, Dr. Shili, uh, what's, your, what's it, your take on thyroid? Interestingly, my mother had hyperthyroidism when she was pregnant with me. And then her thyroid burned out and it was removed with various things surgically 20 years ago, uh, 20, 20 years later. Wait, okay. Then in 1990, I developed hyperthyroidism and it burned out. And now I have hypothyroidism. Ah, okay. Now that's an interesting story. And personal story for me is uh, I'm, <clears throat> I'm also taking thyroid medicine as well. And, I, you know, I don't really consider it uh, medicine per se because it's more so support for the function. But now that we're talking about thyroid, let's talk about what it is. Uh, so thyroid is an endocrine organ. It's uh, it literally, uh, <clears throat> it's right here in the neck uh, and uh, neck area. And if it, uh, some people might notice that there is either goiters or growth or uh, <laughs> yeah. various things. If you see that, it's a little too late to, you know, I, I shouldn't say too late, but, uh, you know, you need to start paying attention to that. Uh, I saw the one almost the size of your head. Oh, God. Being surgically removed. Yeah, and that's that, that's significant. Uh, but the question is, what does thyroid do? And thyroid literally is the energy metabolism, and it's the timing belt, so so to speak, of the of the vehicle. Uh, you know, and I'm not I'm not so much a car person, but uh, I know enough so that when the timing is off on on the on the system in the car, uh, nothing runs right. Not not the engine, not not, not anything else. So uh, what are some of the organs and what are some of the places that are affected by the thyroid? So why don't we start from the head and <laughs> go, on, go on down? Well, essentially, every organ in your body ultimately is controlled by the thyroid. It, it's, it's a race car. It's a race car, exactly. So uh, if you have too much thyroid, you're going way too fast, which means crash and burn, right? If you're going too slow, well, you're <laughs> going too slow. You don't have enough to uh, even even do the speed limit, so to speak. Um, so let's let's start with the brain and some of the things that are may, might be symptoms or concerns uh, of of uh, low thyroid function as related to the brain. Uh, so let's say brain fog, depression, anxiety, stress. Um, 
So what are some of the other things that you uh, dementia? Slow in thinking. Slow in thinking. I mean, basically, all kinds of things related to brain dysfunction. And frequently, when the brain is not functioning as ideally as it should be, there's a, fr a very high chance and high risk that thyroid is going to be involved. Is oh, it? indeed. Yeah. So uh, let's continue moving on down. Uh, of course, neck, throat. I mean, that's where the thyroid itself is. Swallowing. Uh, otherwise, beginning of the digestive system, beginning of the respiratory system. Let's talk about breathing, uh, lungs. Uh, <clears throat> thyroid also affects uh, the respiratory rate it affects uh, the exchange of uh, of uh, say co2 uh, the gases and everything else it affects what happens in the body as a result of that exchange how quickly it's utilized but now we're getting more into some of the other systems here let's kind of stay kind of anatomically so to speak uh, heart that's another big 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 thing you know thyroid and the heart are very intimately connected uh, when the thyroid is low a person tends to have low function. In other words, everything is slow. Everything is well. Low blood pressure. Low blood pressure. Slow. Low. Yeah, low function. Literally. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> the uh, when it's fast, opposite. Just the opposite. Uh, that's that's when you have racing heart, uh, palpitations, arrhythmias, uh, atrial fibrillation various various things and by the way just a quick aside this is where your discovery of magnesium is absolutely essential uh it might not be the entire solution for the thyroid but it certainly is wonderful for atrial fibrillation afib uh, or any other number of cardiac conditions that are out of out of whack and incidentally my mother still lived to be 97 years of age despite the, yes just yeah taking thyroid medication Wonderful, wonderful. So let's continue on. Lungs, uh, air exchange, uh, oxygenation, uh, liver, detoxification. Uh, liver is one of the most essential, important organs in the human body. Uh, if the liver is not doing okay, well, um, you, you have a lot of trouble. Uh, people who drink alcohol to the late stage and they have cirrhosis and uh, fluid in the belly and the liver is just not working, there's all sorts of conditions. There's basically every chronic condition in those folks uh, for the most part, or at least the predisposition. So the liver is extremely important. And again, that's controlled and, uh, and guided by the thyroid. Uh, guts, you know, the GI, the gastrointestinal system. Uh, again, too much thyroid, too fast, diarrhea, too, too, uh, dumping syndrome. In other words, you're passing things too fast. You're not processing, you're not storing, you're not getting nutrients from the food. Too slow, constipation. And that is even worse, as a matter of fact, because what happens is the gut is supposed to detoxify. All sorts of stuff comes through the gut. It's one of the most important organ systems as well. As you pass through the gut, it's supposed to extract the nutrients and release the toxins. Uh, when you when people are constipated, and by the way, constipation is not benign. Constipation <laughs> is anything but benign. So if you are constipated, folks, uh, and the doctor says it's no big deal, it's a big deal. Uh, so check your thyroid. Check your thyroid because again constipation uh, there's a huge association between constipation and uh, poor digestion with uh, thyroid as well there's another organ system uh, which is uh, I, I think of it as a system and one of the most important systems endocrine system hormones in other words not just the thyroid but uh, let's say adrenals the cortisol uh, also on the adrenals is DHEA Interestingly enough, those two are, that combination literally is worth talking about here. Mm -hmm. Definitely. I mean, you know, the ovaries, the testicles, it's all involved. Yeah, the sex, or the, the sex uh, or organs. Uh, uh, <clears throat> but, you know, just the, uh, specifically, you know, when I, my, uh, what we do here in the center uh, is we specialize in hormones, we specialize in the gut. And we specialize in uh, literally uh, in the metabolic me metabolism. And the idea is uh, 
and I'll just kind of take us back to the beginning. Uh, for anyone who has followed us, uh, we've been saying this and we'll say it over and over and over again. You have to have a foundation of health internally, not so much in terms of surgeries and pills, which is conventional medicine, but you've got to have a conven you know, a foundation of health. And that foundation, Dr. Shilly has outlined extremely well from beginning, uh, lifestyle, nutrition, exercise, activity, uh, sleep, stress management, orogenic training, biogenics. Uh, uh, there's macros, in other words, certain supplements, and we'll talk about the supplements you know, as, as we move move forth, uh, just as it relates to the thyroid, because if you do have thyroid issues or concerned about thyroid issues, there are certain things that you've got to have in terms of supplementation. But let's continue down uh, through the, or, the organ systems. Gen genitourinary, in other words, uh, uh, male and female, um, skin, uh, hair, all of that is, is involved. Low thyroid, thin, thin, uh, thin hair or no hair, uh, a low, basically very thin skin, uh, easy bruising, uh, uh, too much thyroid. Uh, uh, well, you've got the opposite problem. Um, so too much, not good, too little, not good. It's got to be balanced. Uh, so the entire body is literally impacted. So uh, how do you test for thyroid? Now, let's talk about that because this is something that I joined you um, I joined the practice, I should say, uh, around 2015, a uh, long time ago seems, but uh, maybe almost like yesterday. Right. One of the first things that I learned from you uh, is that uh, thyroid testing is very inaccurate. Is that, uh, oops, I, I hope you guys can, uh, folks have been able to hear me. The microphone is a little <laughs> bit further away. I hope you can hear me now. Okay, but uh, let's continue the topic. Uh, so, uh, Dr. Shili, you started, uh, I started learning about holistic medicine, and one of the first things I learned is that the conventional thyroid testing is not accurate. And conventional therapy sucks. Boom. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, go, go ahead, please. Well, you know, replacement of the thyroid itself comes from pigs. It's Armor been, thyroid. That's yes. right. Yes. It's been around for at least a century and it's uh this is this is what we call desiccated you know in other words let's talk about thyroid function and thyroid uh <clears throat> nomenclature in other words what you might hear what you might understand and what you might expect and ask your doctor uh, as well most physicians are familiar and are aware of something called tsh thyroid stimulating hormone uh, TSH is the first and the most common thing that people measure in the medical office for a thyroid function. And the interesting thing is, <clears throat> it's almost like think, uh, thinking about this as a almost like a factory management and production. Uh, so TSH is like management. When the thyroid function is low or inadequate, uh, TSH or the management uh, literally activates and says, okay, hey, we got to kick into production. We need more thyroid uh, activity. And so what happens then is then the thyroid gland then produces T3 and T4. T3 uh, and T4 are interchangeable, but T4 is a precursor molecule to T3. It's the inactive molecule. So if anybody measures T4 and not the T3, wrong. You're not getting accurate information. Also, also, uh, and this is what I learned from you uh, a long time ago as well, is you, when you measure... Um, uh, thyroid levels, you, ha you have to have uh, free levels, free T3, free T4, because not the bound, not the, not, not, not the one that's conjugated to carrier molecules. You want to know wh who are the actual soldiers in the field, so to speak, uh, doing the work. And the T3 uh, or free T3 is what is, is the active molecule. Um, so if you want to know where you are, you want to know what the free T3 levels are, in relation to TSH. You also want to know what the free T4 levels are, what the precursor status is. You also want to know what the reverse T3 is as well. I don't know too many too many people who measure those uh, that, that level. Right. Almost almost no one. I mean, it's, and I look at blood work that, you know, my, my patients bring from other practices. It's usually TSH, usually T, T4, sometimes T3, 
Uh, and uh, that's basically it. So uh, reverse T3 is the inactive T3. So you have, uh, for example, uh, free T3 and reverse T3. And if one, if for example, if reverse T3 is high, but the free T3 is low, that means even if you have thyroid T3 uh, in your body, it's not, uh, it's not functioning right. It's not doing the job. And there may be multiple reasons for that. The body is very smart in a way. Um, so you can have adjustment, you can have maladjustment, and then you can have decompensation, uh, as a matter of fact. Other things that I always measure with thyroid, and this is something that you've taught me as well, is to check for the levels of uh, autoimmunity. Uh, and for example, uh, there is uh, what, some of the most common reasons in our society, when, when, with all the poisons and all the issues, and you've got glyphosate in the, in, in the soil, in the food, you've got, um, my God, chlorine and fluoride in the water, <laughs> you've got aluminum in the sky, We've got all sorts of heavy metals, toxicity. That's I was I, I checked my own levels, by the way, just as an aside of uh, metals. And I was thinking just for the just curiosity, because I didn't think I was going to have any anything bad. I, I lit up on basically every metal. And uh, so that means I'm going to start just as an aside again. I'm going to start uh, accumulation therapy for myself so I can start getting rid of that stuff. <laughs> and thank God we do that in clinic here. Uh, so uh, the idea the concept uh, is that you want to know what's happening in the thyroid itself and with everything going on with all the immunizations all the shots all the medicines all the autoimmunity all of the stuff everything happening uh it just literally seems that uh, it's almost a quarter of the people with a low thyroid function or hyperthyroid is uh, related to the immune uh, attack on the on, on the body itself and therapy it's extremely important. And the average doctor mistreats. The classic <laughs> treatment is levothyroxine. How do you feel about that? Sucks. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Quite so. Quite so. I agree. Uh, and why do why do physicians uh, prefer <laughs> levothyroxine? Uh, now, in my own practice uh, and growing up, so to speak, as a medical student and as a young practitioner, I've been in practice now for about 20 years. So, I mean, a lot of things have changed since. Now, you've been in practice for a lot longer than that. <laughs> well, yes. Yeah, you got a bunch of decades on me. Uh, and about 90. <laughs> yes sir yes sir by the way uh, the 90th birthday was fantastic <laughs> it was wonderful to have uh, to, to be able to do that uh so uh yes, i apologize let's gonna get back to uh, to the treatment uh, there is something called pharmaco there's a term that dr shilly uses quite a bit uh, pharmacomafia and pharmaco education mm -hmm and um, all of that other stuff. So how that works is uh, obviously you have the insurances of third party payers and you've, you've written an inter interesting book as a matter of fact, you could, you know, I think the title is third party rape, rape, by all means, third party. I mean, it's just, you know, the healthcare system has been compromised, has been abused and has been, well, um, terrible in some ways, all because of the business model. And what is the business model? The business model is medical education, pharmaceutical industry, and then of course you got regulatory agencies. And anybody who still believes FDA, CDC, WHO, and anybody else, well, I feel bad for you. Uh, you know, uh, and I shouldn't say that, but you know, please reevaluate uh, your sources of information and just take a look at everything and see who you trust. Because if you're trusting your health and your wellness and your life uh, to the authorities and the government, uh, after all we've seen, I would say, please think twice. Please think twice. Do you have anything to say on that matter? Ignore it in general. Yeah. Seek a really holistic physician. Yes. So uh, why do you think there's so much resistance to armor thyroid in the medical community? Because it's not a drug. Ah. It, it's pure replacement therapy. Yes. You know, the, the pigs and we suffer, share. Common, yeah, uh, uh, bi well, yeah. biological pathways. In, right. in New Zealand, they also get it from ponies. 
Ah, gotcha. And there's also another version, uh, which is very similar to mm -hmm. armor. I know you got your preferences. And again, you know, we, we can agree to disagree slightly, but, you know, I don't mind the NP thyroid either. NP thyroid is also a desiccated form of thyroid. It's 3T3, 3T4. And uh, it's really, it's it's really wonderful in um, uh, in that uh, it, just like armor, uh, it provides a lot of help. Now, levothyroxine, in my clinical experience, and I see a lot of people, quite a, quite a, a few of my patients have uh, uh, have this issue, um, is uh, about fifty to sixty percent failure rate. Yes, is that what you've seen? It, exactly. Okay, so in other words, uh, less than 50% uh, e efficacy. And yet, it uh, continues to be the choice of prescription by most pr practitioners. Not a surprise, but it is what it is, folks. Uh, if you are going to be on armor or NP thyroid, um, in other words, desiccated thyroid. Now, there's other forms, of course, but that's some of our favorites. Um, I also will say that it's essential to work on the lifestyle, stress management, and supplements, micros, uh, macronutrients, micronutrients. Let's start from the top. So uh, lifestyle, without proper lifestyle, without proper nutrition, without proper movement, without proper sleep and rest and reset, uh, without proper body mass, you know, you know, mass index, in other words, the weight for height ratio. And I, and don't just look at the number. Uh, look in the mirror. If you're full of muscle and 400 pounds, good on you. Fantastic. If you are not full of muscles and 400 pounds, maybe not so good. Maybe not so good. Uh, the, you know, hormones and metabolism, everything affects everything else. Adipose tissue, uh, in other words, fat cells, they will convert hormones. They will also uh, have an effect on the thyroid metabolism and vice versa. It's Everything relates to everything. Whatever you can do to clean up the basement, so to speak, the foundation, please do so because if you don't, and, uh, and this is something that you've been telling me for a long time, you can work very hard on the top floor, but if the foundation is not solid, you're going to be working really, really hard your whole life. So that's that's one of the simple things. Stress management. And then we talk about stress often and we talk about it in various capacities. Another way uh, to describe and talk about stress and stress management, stress solutions is uh, hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis. Now, when people don't take me seriously enough when I say the word stress, I use the fancy words. Why is that? Uh, well, uh, here's the key. Uh, it's a real thing. It's not just in your head. It's not. It, it's 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 not just uh, you know just deal with it. It's not just hey, everybody's got one or I have no stress. I, I've heard everything, or a lot of variations. I should say you've you've heard more probably. <laughs> you're you're the, you're the father of stress management, actually. As a matter of fact, uh, oh, please. I, uh, you know, I in 1972, I set the world on fire, auditing training. Boom, yeah. I've practiced it every day of my life since then, and I consider it the treatment of stress. And stress is essential uh, in either health, wellness, or dis-ease, mm -hmm. lack of ease. Uh, folks, uh, just a simple thing. Uh, hypothalamus, pituitary, adrenals. Adrenals is where the kidneys are. Uh, on, on the adrenals, uh, there are two main two things that I want to talk about that are basically opposing to each other, or sh I should say, balancing each other. Not opposing, balancing. That's how nature works. That's how human body works. There's systems that balance each other. So on a stress level, and as as it relates to thyroid, uh, the hypothyroid and the stress level are inversely, you know, words, thyroid and stress are, are inversely related. The higher the stress, the worse the thyroid function is. The worse the thyroid function is, the higher the stress, the higher, the less the capacity to handle the stress. And that leads to entire cascade. Now, the DHEA is the compound, is the molecule hormone, I should say, precursor to other sex hormones and otherwise. And it's actually also made in the kidneys. And most people have burned out uh, through illness, 
mental, emotional, physical stress of life. And uh, most people are at a, at a place where they really don't have much capacity to handle stress effectively. So biogenics and orogenic training, it's not the only way, but it's one of the main uh, wonderful uh, tools to control stress. Now, uh, biogenics, over 68 various exercises yes. and the complete self-regulation system. Variations on a theme. <laughs> Variations on a theme, wonderful. Supplements. Now, Dr. Shili, uh, I know you just retired recently, but uh, what would you say on supplements, uh, the basic essentials for somebody who is thyroid issues, mostly hyperthyroid? D3, vitamin C, vitamin B complex. Th those, uh, oh. Magnesium. Magnesium. Topical. Topical. It is not absorbed drug, the mouth. No. It, it's the greatest laxative in the world. And uh, and I don't mind that. And I tell people to take that if you have constipation. Sometimes when I need to move the bowels, I do it myself. Uh, it's not a problem. I like it, but uh, not for the purpose of getting magnesium in my body. Yes, only lotion or soaking in a bath. Magnesium chloride. That was one of the patents that you actually had a long time ago. Right. Yeah. Now, uh, other things that kind of go with it. And if you want to get a proper amounts of the B complex, uh, for example, Shili Essentials uh, has, uh, uh, well, has uh, 25 to 50 milligrams of B, depending on how much you take. Um, youth formula combines vitamin C with uh, MSM. Um, that combination raises DHEA by 60% naturally. And that's wonderful. Plus, it increases the efficiency of uh, vitamin C. Um, uh, the vitamin D is, uh, just to be more specific, uh, devil's in the detail, generally, uh, 50,000 unit capsule. That's one of the more efficient ways to take it uh, once a week if you are under 130 pounds or every 10 days, three times a month if you are under. Excuse me, the under, you take it every 10 days. Over, you take it every week. Excuse me, magnesium topical daily, handful lotion or cream, or you can take baths. Uh, magnesium, uh, magnesium salts, Epsom salts. Uh, I'm not sure if it's as effective. Epsom salts is not as good. Not as good as magnesium chloride. Another thing that we would need to talk about is uh, uh, iodine, because uh, if you're gonna, if anyone, if a person has uh, thyroid issues, you must have substrate not just the hormone, but the substrate. You have to be able to feed it as well. And uh, iodine is comes in several forms. Mm -hmm. There is Lugol iodine, which is a couple of drops, uh, you know, once a couple of, well, every day, I should say, if you do the go that route, depending on your need for vitamin D, uh, for, 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 for iodine, excuse me. Uh, uh, the other uh, form is called iodorol. Iodorol comes in a 12.5 milligram capsule. And that is what we recommend once a week uh, in general. Uh, now, I, uh, I've taken it more frequent than that, but uh, from what I, uh, again, it's not necessary and it's not recommended in, that, in those amounts. And uh, if there was, as a matter of fact, uh, an emergency, a nuclear situation or something that will destroy fast growing cells such as thyroid and otherwise, yes, there is a benefit to taking extra iodine. But you don't want to take more than you need to because, again, it's almost like, you know, you have a wonderful uh, meal, dinner, and instead of a one plate, you get 10 plates. Uh, you know, yes, you can eat all that, but it's not good for you and it's not necessary. So um, anything else on the topic of thyroid that off, off the top of your head? Well, essentially, if the thyroid is deficient, Mm -hmm. And it most often is. <laughs> you need to supplement with real stuff. If, if the artificial sucks, mm -hmm. now you you need a little iota raw, and you need to watch your temperature. Let's talk about the temperature and the testing. Yes. Yeah. There is a reason. There is a reason why the testing is wildly inaccurate. Now, um, I'm not saying disregard it. We still do the tests just to see if you know where we are and to guide and to guide the therapy. But, Dr. Shili, 
if I came to you as a patient and my tests were normal, so to speak, T especially you know most, most common TSH, T3, T4, it, let's say it looks good, and my doctor says to me, yeah, you don't have any problems, even though you're tired and your hair is falling out and your skin is dry and thin, <laughs> and you've got uh, basically and, you, and you're constipated and you got all the classic signs of uh, <laughs> uh, you're not well, not feeling well, hypothyroid. Yeah, not, you, you're normal. You're okay. The, the labs are perfectly fine. What would you say to that? It sucks. <laughs> <laughs> and here's and there's a reason. There's a reason why that is that happens to be the case. Uh, we talked about environmental disruptors or poisons. And one of the most common ones, and let's spend a little time on this because this is very, very important. What is the number one killer of thyroid other than, of course, well, the, the most obvious lifestyle and stress and everything else? Fluoride. Would you like to talk about that a little bit? Uh, the fluoride and how it affects the oh, entire system? Well, fluoride is, is poison to the system. Every, every endocrine. Any, 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 any organ in, in the body suffers from the, the supplement. Uh, well, it's a, well, this poison, literally. Uh, and fluoride uh, is in a toothpaste. Uh, so if you have a regular standard toothpaste recommended by your ADA, American uh, Dental Association, uh, please stop that. Uh, there are toothpastes. The, the uh, ADA is as bad as the AMA. AMA, yep. Actually, a lot of those three-letter agencies have something in common. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's a good thing we, you know, how we, we, we are called real holistic duck, not a <laughs> not a three-letter abbreviation, right? All right. So, um, uh, what happens in uh, what happens in those situations? Fluoride takes place instead of the uh, uh, thyronine, in other words, it, 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 of, of the regular building block. It's a mimic mimicry. It looks like it, uh, it, it, it's right on the thyroid. It looks like the thyroid molecule is okay, but it's the wrong molecule. It's fluoride. And it's, so that's, that's how that poison works. So technically on paper, your doctor is going to look at you and say, your numbers are fine. <laughs> but yet you feel like crap. So what do you do? Short of it? Any questions, if it doesn't make sense, if it doesn't seem right, if it doesn't feel right, if there's a discrepancy between what you're hearing and what you're feeling, well, guess what? Listen to your body. Uh, and I'll say this, uh, it's it, it's wonderful to have uh, trust and faith in, 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 in a physician and to have a good relationship with your physician. It's, it's important. It's important to be able to talk, to communicate, and to be open about all this. Uh, uh, now, if your doctor is not able to do that for you, well, that kind of that's not exactly my understanding of what a physician should be, because a physician is not technically a, just a, a, a well, it's not a, a person who does mechanical stuff. It's a person who connects with you and who, who wants to take care of you. Basically, it's not medicine. Hmm. It, it's fake medicine. Fake medicine. As a matter of fact, uh, I would say fake medicine began uh, started going back back in 1700s with the separation yes. of the uh, the cart, wasn't it? Right. Uh, yes, separation uh, beginning of the modern science, so to speak, which is far wonderful. Don't get me wrong; I like the modern science, but the the minute that you cut off the spirit and the soul, and the and the minute that you cut off the the head from the rest of the body, you have lost the human. You have lost the human, folks. Well. Uh, we did uh, cover a lot in a very short period. Um, I uh, don't have the screen here so that I can see the questions, but uh, perhaps if we can have the, any questions or thoughts. Uh, and uh, first of all, hello to everyone out there. Um, oh. Empty there? Yep, still, uh, still going. But uh, in the meantime, is there a question that uh, came up? Yes, I'll start with you guys' first question. Mm -hmm. And please feel free to send us any question, any comment, any thought. Wonderful to have you. And today's topic is thyroid, but you can ask about anything. 
So hi guys, although my TSH always shows normal range, I have long suspected a subclinical thyroid imbalance. I also suffered from AFID, as did my mother, who was hypo and later hyperthyroid. These GPS I've had are quite useless, as you know. Rhoda Barnes armpit test always shows 94 to 96. How can I find someone to administer the right test as well as benevolent treatment? Thanks and well, Monica. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Uh, fi find a holistic physician who is willing to listen and uh, and to approach you as an individual, as a human being, because the goal is to treat a human. It's not to treat a number. And if your doctor does not have the courtesy, and again, you know, doctors are humans. You know, we, we the other thing is we work in systems. When I work in a hospital, there's very little I can do outside the box. So I have to acknowledge that. That's why we have my, our own practice. Uh, Get in touch with a real holistic doc, uh, and I mean it. Uh, if you have a real holistic doc near you, wonderful. We are a real holistic doc, uh, and our clinic is 417-351-5221. Uh, I deal with thyroid quite a bit. It's about 50% of my clients have uh, have issues related to thyroid actively, and that's part of uh, the big picture with the hormones and the gut and everything else. So. If you if your doctor is not getting you the results that you need, uh, feel free to do something different. In other words, uh, uh, the definition of insanity: doing the same thing, expecting a different result. Four one seven three five one five two two one. Don't consider integrative holistic. It well, sucks. The word integrative. Let's 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 talk about that. Uh, originally, it was a nice word, but it got contaminated. Um, and unfortunately, uh, well, people use words in different ways. One example Dr. Shealy has used, and I still remember you saying that, uh, is when a hospital puts a hot stone massage, uh, you know, when a hospital put, uh, and this has been the past, hot stone massage room in one of the rooms in the closet and uh, was charging for the space in the room and they called it integrative. Uh, now that's not exactly <laughs> holistic, um, but that's okay. It is what it is. Um, uh, any other questions, please? Okay. Yeah. What can be done about uh, varicocle or testy pain? Oh, uh, one more time, please. What can be done about? Uh, I'm not sure the word varicocle or testy pain. Testicular pain. Okay. Um, there's different reasons. Okay. What can be done about uh, testicular pain? And there's a number of uh, uh, of reasons why that would happen. There could be an accumulation of fluid benign uh, in the testicle. Uh, uh, in other words, uh, that's um, swelling and uh, pain, but it's not, you know, it doesn't threaten the testicle itself. Uh, now, acutely, if, they, if there's an injury or otherwise, and this I see in the emergency room with a six hour interval window to save the testicle, uh, if it is truly torsed, or if it's uh, truly, uh, uh, if it's truly having, you know, having a blood flow issue or uh, or an infection of some sort, uh, urology is essential. But if it's chronic, if it's chronic, uh, uh, hmm, do you think PEMF might be of uh, benefit as a cellular it's support? It's worth trying, but I have no clinical experience, so I. Possibility. Uh, one, one, one thing I'm talking about is the uh, cellular optimization and healing on a cellular level. And that takes place through, of course, lifestyle and just literally readjusting who we are, recalibrating uh, the system, but also macros, uh, the basic supplements, good B complex, uh, vitamin C, uh, vitamin D, magnesium, some of the basics, again, just to make sure that system is running well. Uh, and uh, I would stay follow you know with a follow-up with urology on that just because uh, i've seen people with chronic uh, uh testicular issues and uh, and, and the f fluid accumulation uh, 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 turn into something else and that what happens pain has become slightly different but uh, people you know people are tough you know and uh, i've had some person ignore that and, uh, and some really terrible outcomes so something different something new get to get to the doctor urology is a good place to start but it's uh it's a non-threat non-life-threatening condition although very unpleasant very unpleasant uh any other questions yeah, please? next question uh -huh. uh, the old time docs routinely prescribed iodine which cured a broad range of symptoms why aren't they treating with iodine today uh i would say the word ignorance 
would you uh, why 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 are, okay the question is uh, in the old the old time ducks used iodine quite a bit for a number of conditions yes. and i agree it's a uh, it's wonderful uh, i'll get I'll, I'll mention another application for iodine somebody who's got uh, for example breast tenderness for example or swelling uh, lymph uh, lymph flow issues and that can lead all the way to breast cancer the you know when when you have congestion and uh, and backed up lymphatics uh, rubbing a little iodine on the topical on, on, on around the breast area um of course you know, as long as, as long as that's proper for you can be life-saving and uh can decrease the inflammation and improve the lymph flow uh, there's a number of other things that iodine will do yeah uh conventional medicine i've noticed uh, uh, that the common sense stuff has literally left the table yes mm. So if you're looking for common sense um, in the in the healthcare system as it is, well, good luck. If you find it, wonderful. Um, if you don't, well, it is it is what it is. Um, um, okay. Uh, yeah. Susan says, I was advised that 50K of vitamin D at one time would be very toxic, overload to liver, and could launch cancer. What do you think of that advice? 50K. Let's talk about it. This is going to be one of uh, one of your favorite topics. Uh, talking about uh, vitamin D and what is too much and what is what is not enough. So the question is: Is fifty thousand that little capsule of vitamin D? And the comment is th that the, the young lady was told that it's too much and can be toxic for the kidneys. Well, in a normal person, it's not toxic. Correct. We gave a bunch of men fifty thousand daily. Mm -hmm. for six months and it did not harm them and actually it grew the penis longer ah now let's say you let's say you're not a male let's say you are a female and you're worried about the kid the, the, well thinking about what that statement is that uh, toxicity or otherwise so a d e and k vitamins a d e and k those are the fat soluble vitamins which means uh, if you take in a huge amount, it'll get stored in the fat tissue and that'll get released over time. So from that perspective, you don't want to be overloaded with vitamin D, nor with A, uh, A K or E for that, for that matter. Now, the interesting thing is while this, while the conventional medicine is so afraid of the high levels of vitamin D, they are keeping people at super low levels of vitamin D, which is literally killing everybody. It's the low D, which is dangerous. It's the low D that's associated with cancers, uh, all kinds of metabolic diseases, blood pressure, cholesterol, diabetes, immunity, uh, you name it, Auto autoimmunity, lots of problems. Uh, 50,000 units once a week if you're over 135 pounds, 130 pounds, uh, that's very safe. Uh, uh, if you're under, every 10 days. The other thing we talk about vitamin D is if you know that your levels are low and we always check that on our new patients or on intral basis. Uh, or if you, uh, again, if you haven't had vitamin D in a long time and your chances are you are low, uh, this is what we do. We load. It's, it's a boot camp for vitamin D. And this is literally 450,000 international units. 450,000. So that's 50,000 50, unit capsule times three on day one times the three of those on day two and three and three on day three nine total so uh, and after that you go to once a week and thereafter i do this if, I, if i'm about to get sick or if i need to boost the immunity or for, for, for whatever reason if i'm not feeling well but i don't do this every day now uh, technically if somebody does take vitamin D at 50,000 units on a daily basis, I did that for about a year myself, and it was wonderful. Uh, uh, it uh, it does, you, you do have to check calcium levels. And I did that, uh, you know, every uh, four or six months, basically, and it was fine. It was fine. But uh, the association is more so, while you have to watch out for the too high, because it's fat soluble and stored, low is the danger i hope i answered that question okay let's continue please yeah will the gamma mold help get heavy metals out of the brain okay will the gamma gamma mold yeah. gamma mode help uh, get heavy metals out of uh oof, i would love to say yes i just don't know uh yes I, definitely 
need more research. Need more research. But the fact that the gamma does so well for the brain, <clears throat> I wonder if that is one of the uh, one of the possibilities. Uh, I know that uh, you know part of the functional medicine practice that we have here as is, uh, is we check for the heavy metals, and we also do the something called chelation. And chelation, something you know, with a with a substance called like EDTA, there could be oral chelation as well. Uh, you can literally uh, unload all of that stuff from all the organs, but it does take multiple treatments. Some people have to come in for up to thirty treatments at a given time, and then you eval evaluate and you go further. But you know what? It's not just in the brain; it's also in the heart. It's in the vascular system, and just cleaning up is absolutely essential. And the, uh, Dr. Shili, with the environment and where we are in the world today, I don't know anyone who's probably clean of, any, <laughs> of all, all, all the toxins. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. I hope I answered that question. But let's continue, please. Uh, uh -huh. Do you need documentation to go through airport security with PEMF device? I'm concerned it will be confiscated from me. Oh, I'll tell you. I'll tell you a fun story. Uh, so. Uh, I, I like to have fun with DSA people. Uh, not lately, but I, I used to have a lot of fun with it. Uh, so uh, one of the things I used to do on a routine basis, and I, I wear the PEMF, the ring uh, on me in the emergency room. I'm known as a doctor with a halo. So I do the same going through the TSA security. And I, I love to see their eyes bug out, literally. Uh, not for any other reason, but to just, uh, you know, hey, what is that thing, you know? And uh, so basically, and then I just, uh, and, and I, when I, whenever I can show up early, I will, I will do it. I, I'll take out my PMF unit. It usually comes with me if, when I'm traveling. And then I go into a basically a, a 30 minute explanation about how the electromagnetic works and so on and so forth and the benefits. And but usually by, by the 40, 40th second, uh, you know, it's like, sir, please move on, move on, you know? Uh, so uh, it's, uh, uh, it's a medical device. Short of it, it's a medical device. Uh, but uh, yeah, if uh, if you are not interested in answering questions, uh, because I mean, I, I love to engage with people and teach, but uh, if you don't want to teach them on the spot, well, maybe you shouldn't wear it at TSA as you're passing through. Uh, but uh, uh, please. Uh -huh. PEMF, can it be used in Europe? Does it need a converter? Uh, can be used in Europe. Uh, yes, yes, it can. Uh, converter is highly recommended, yes. And uh, we do have actually we do have several several people uh, who are quite active in Europe uh, with PEMFs, and um, it's it's a wonderful wonderful thing. Um, thank you. Uh, is that uh, some uh, or all the questions for now? Wonderful, wonderful. Now I do want to say uh, uh, thank you for our supporters and sponsors. Uh, you know people who are here right here in Springfield, and one of the one of the really nice places here is uh, Spring Valley. It's the place to that I shop. It's service, service, service. 10,000 items and you have to find one or two. The person comes to help you. It's the greatest place of service in this city. I love the place. And uh, plus, you know, they, they carry the essentials, the youth formula, the um, magnesium, yes. the bliss oils. Uh, uh, well, uh, lots of yeah. our lots of our favorites. Uh, so everything but the PEMP device, everything but the PEMP device. If you want that, you need to get in touch with us. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, last but not least, uh, actually, uh, if you're not getting your fruits and veggies uh, mm -hmm. and you, you and you should, because it's there's so many benefits and uh, ultimately it's really good for you. But if not, Tart cherry juice concentrate, one of the best things for you. Great for blood pressure, cholesterol, anti-inflammatory. Tastes great, and it doesn't take much. Tart cherry juice concentrate. Is this item one of your favorite things? Yes. Yes, sir. Yeah. Taking it at least thirty years. Now that's a long time. Yeah, and. Planning to hopefully take it for another 20 or 30. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, uh, we are uh, about 15 minutes to an hour, unless we have any other questions, but uh, happy to do that. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, Gail, please. Yes. Relating to earlier session with Dr. Welton, spinal minor occulta at base with your spine treatment be appropriate. Also, I have 
Unmelionated Vegas Freeze Mode. Ah, okay. Um, that is a very interesting question. Uh, let, uh, let me actually just see if I can read that uh, uh, and, and repeat it to the, to, the, to the public because this is uh, a lot of moving parts. So this question refers to the conversation with Dr. Ryan Welton. He was on the program uh, last week. And so uh, one of the, so the first part of the question is, uh, Kale, please, if you don't mind, uh, if I'm not mistaken, it was uh, regarding a spina bifida, correct? Uh, spinal minor occulta at base. Oh, spinal, uh, spina, or spinal minor occulta in place. That is a, that, that's a, um, uh, well, condition in the spine that can cause significant Yes. Discomfort and significant pain. Is the question with regard to what what are some of the modalities or how to get in touch with uh, Ryan? Uh, it just says, would your spine treatment be appropriate? Uh, would the, okay, would the PEMF be appropriate? I think it may help with the pain and some of the neuropathy uh, based there, uh, potentially. Now, uh, give it a go uh, and just let us know how it works. But uh, technically, I would say mode number one. Yeah. Uh, was there a second part of the question there that we didn't answer? Um, it was more of a comment. She said, mm -hmm. also, I have un U N M Y E L I N A T E D Vegas. Oh, uh, uh, yes, uh, the, the Vegas nerve. Uh, unfortunately, uh, so sympathetic, parasympathetic. Let's approach that this way. Um, this is part of the practice, what, what I learned from Dr. Shealy very early on. How many people have dysautonomia? Dysautonomia being defined as dysregulation of stress response, sympathetic fight or flight versus relaxation. That's what we're talking about, vagal nerve dysregulation. Uh, A lot. <laughs> in our practice, I would say what I see is at least 85 to 90% to various degrees. Some people are better than others. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, that, this is where biogenics and, uh, and, and the PEMF can truly shine because that is one place where we've seen a lot of uh, improvement. Uh, of course, with a vagal nerve, you also have to work on the limbic system. And the limbic system, you know, basically is the, that's the, you know, the memory, emotions, feelings, uh, uh, literally the driving mechanism behind behind everything we do, everything we are, how we respond, what we respond to, why we're, you know, what we do. Uh, so uh, this is where a holistic approach has to come in. This is where it's not just mechanical. It's not just uh, it's 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 not any kind of device necessarily by itself. Lifestyle, supplements, uh, nutri I say nutrition supplements. I should say mac um, micros. In other words, vitamins, minerals, making sure the body has everything that it needs, uh, and uh, of course, uh, learning a uh, biofeedback is essential in that because uh, with even with the worst case of dysautonomia you can it's not over you can re-regulate you can reset you can relearn uh, and this is what it's all about mastery learning your body learning your mind learning relearning your system god doesn't make junk humans do and uh if we do we get to correct ourselves what are you what are your thoughts on uh on the dysautonomia and otherwise uh, suggestions? Well, essentially, biogenics is the treatment of choice. Now, unfortunately, for those who are uh, who don't like to do work uh, and just want a silver bullet, uh, biogenics is not a silver bullet in that uh, it's, <laughs> it's not going to do the work for you. Uh, just like the supplement and everything else. You have to take the supplement. You have to take the... the you also have to train and practice. And... Um, one thing that I can say, uh, and I'm really grateful for that, when I was, uh, in, in, and I, I talked about this before, in 2021, uh, March, when I crashed uh, a vehicle and uh, I was basically in the hospital, uh, uh, well, couldn't move my lower body, paralyzed uh, from a, a L3 burst fracture, uh, there was no help from the nursing. 
Uh, I was assigned to a room overnight and they were very busy. My wife got kicked out. So I was literally in a room by myself. I couldn't move. I couldn't, uh, nobody responded to help. So all I had with me, I didn't even have headphones uh, to listen to the audio. I just uh, had uh, the fact that I train and I teach biogenics. Um, so that's the only thing that I could do. And I, that's what I was doing the whole night. Uh, and it was wonderful. I was exhausted. But uh, at the end of the night, I realized something very, very powerful. I have control over my own being. I have control over my, my sens sensations, my feelings, and my outcomes. And I have the power. And uh, that was wonderful to realize and to acknowledge. Um, now, the pain wasn't wonderful, but uh, the training was. So uh, training is what it is. When you learn how to drive a car, uh, it's, initially it's hard. When you learn martial arts, initially it's hard. When you learn any kind of a skill, it's hard. But once you get good, you start developing patterns. You start developing recognition. And then uh, it, it just becomes a, a muscle memory almost. So what we want is muscle memory for your brain, muscle memory for your sympathetic parasympathetic, muscle memory for your hormones, uh, muscle memory for your internal functioning. Humans are a wonderful, wonderful creation. Uh, a human being is a miracle in itself. When you look in the mirror, when you, you know, when, when you literally just look in the mirror when, uh, when you get a chance, you are staring, you're looking at one of the most advanced biological machineries, devices, creations that can ever exist. Uh, all the functions, all the protections, all the redundancies, all the things that basically uh, balance each other and make things work. But we've got to make that mechanism work. We have to come back to the blueprint. We have to come back to the foundation. Train the brain. Train the brain. Reset and come back to the original condition. Otherwise, well, um, there's society and there's conventional medical system, and we prefer not. Uh, Gail, anything else? or uh... Can iodorol be used along with other thyroid medications? Wonderful question. Can iodorol be used with other thyroid medication? Yes, and that's exactly what we recommend. If I put somebody on armor or antithyroid or any combination of thyroid, and you, you did the same, uh, uh, iodorol or Lugol's iodine is a completely standard part of the equation. It's, uh, you know, if you bring in a hormone, you have to bring in the substrate. You have to feed it. You have to give it uh, the nutrients and, and uh, what it needs to function. Absolutely. And uh, thank you. Uh, uh, anything else uh, on the question end? Uh, um, I think you guys have already answered this question, but I'll ask it again sure. just in case. Yeah. Will the gamma mode help for the brain get rid of heavy metals as well as for depression and ADHD? Ah, okay. So uh, the, the initial question will, will uh, the PEMF, the gamma mode, which is usually where that you know, over close to the head, um, uh, help with, uh, uh, I see the original part of the question was heavy metal detox. And we answered that we, you know, saying that there needs to be more research, but we know that the brain does get better function. Uh, now, ADHD, absolutely, uh, I would recommend that because uh, in ADHD, as a matter of fact, there's two modes on PEMF that I would like for you to try. Uh, the uh, one is the gamma mode. Uh, gamma mode is the optimization. It's the uh, I'm okay. It's the meditator's mind. Um, but if the mind is too active as it is, it may be beneficial to try and to uh, and then to do a delta mode. Delta is the is the third mode, and it's where zero to three cycles per second supports stage three deep sleep. But it also it also supports decrease in nerve activity. So, uh, and the trouble with ADHD is, um, and uh, as an emergency room doc, I, I probably have a mild case as well. I just have to, you know, be frank, uh, you know, and uh, I, I manage well, but uh, it's a factor. Um, so uh, uh, I find uh, when I put the PEMF device, uh, and I usually have 20 different conversations going on in my head, lots of different thoughts, uh, uh, very active most of the time. Uh, but uh, it comes down and just slows down and just focuses in. And I'm able to do to be a lot more effective and productive. So that's gamma for me. But sometimes I really need to go to delta. And some and uh, you know when I, if I am a little too stimulated or I'm just too too. Mm, 
uh, well, busy of a morning, uh, a little Delta, I feel good. And, and there's no question that Delta optimizes sleep. Mm. And of course, sleep is essential. Uh, without sleep, uh, you don't reset the body, you don't, you don't reset the organs, and uh, that's what it takes to function. That's, that's what it takes to be okay. Um, hmm. Anything else? Uh, so we have uh, two more comments. They're getting a little bit more technical. I'm going to try and hot fix this just real quick. So sure. Ask. Well, we have a few more comments. Uh, now, timing is coming uh, pretty close, so we might be able to answer that, uh, uh, well, privately, if we don't have time to address it uh, for the rest of the hour, or if we can, we will. Um, but folks, uh, I do want to say uh, so a quick essential summary, uh, summary on, on the thyroid gland. It's a small little gland located in your anterior neck, fr front of the neck, and it controls literally every organ system. If you're not getting good answers from your doctor, or if you have too many un unsolved mysteries, uh, or the labs, uh, lab values say are okay and you're not okay, it's time to see a real holistic duck. And that's all, folks. Um, uh, okay, uh, were we able to figure out uh, how to? So we're going to go dark yeah. here for just a second. So bear with us, audience. Folks, and uh, if we can uh, make this work, we will. Otherwise, we'll see you next Wednesday. Dr. Shrili, since um, since we have you we have you on the radio, do you want to share a little bit about your life in the meantime with the well, audience? Talk about how you're doing and uh... well, I'm, I'm doing extremely well. You know, I have no no problems to speak of. I just a weak left foot. Uh, but other than that, nothing. I am glad. I, I am glad. the compass hospice. Compass nurse sees me once a week, and she is disappointed. <laughs> have more problems. <laughs> well, uh, I think. Uh, well, you've been in a tough place, but uh, I think you're going for 100, 130 now, aren't you? Yep. Okay. Yep. So we're gonna. I think we're gonna be in a good, good place. Okay. I think, and, and now we're up. Okay. Oh, we got some really good questions here. Edgar Casey readings called for one drop of water soluble form of iodine on day one, two, uh, on day two, three. Uh, see, it says uh, on day three, and that's for that is it for the week. Then, after a few weeks, none, but that's good for Hashimoto's. I agree for Hashimoto's, that's a different story. Yeah. Hashimoto's is a different type of a thyroid condition where. You have, it's an autoimmune. In other words, the body is attacking the thyroid. And what happens is you have storm of activity. So that is why that that specific uh, combination. Uh, but because what happens thereafter is uh, frequently is that hyper too much becomes too little. Because once the storm burns, burns out, well, that's now you're low. So now uh, that's when you have to figure out, first of all, why is there autoimmunity? Just to get to the root cause, and second of all, how to deal with the thyroid to optimize it in the meantime, and that's what uh, that's that's part of the solution. Uh, okay, Emma. So another question. Um, hmm, I am using the PEMF since December, and it has helped considerably with brain and neuro problems. Wonderful. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, that is wonderful. Um, that is wonderful. We love those stories. That's what keeps us keeps us going, and that's what uh, that's why we're here. I appreciate you. Another question: uh, What is the SI uh, uh, in uh, above Doctor Welton's uh, uh, comment? Cannot uh, use uh, electric uh, wall uh, as erratic energy from fingers. Will try to pull one day. Okay, I understand. Uh, um, uh, SI, uh, I believe there's a different, different abbreviations for SI, and one of them that's not uh, what Dr. Ryan Walton is talking about is suicidal ideation. 
Uh, that's that's another medical abbreviation on that. I believe uh, the SI that he is talking about uh, is uh, the sacroiliac function. Uh, say, uh, sacroiliac is the uh, is where you have the sit bones basically, and it's a very common malfunction that leads people to have surgeries. And it's a very simple fix by people by folks like uh, Ryan, and we also do that here in the office. Uh, but not many people know about that, unfortunately, including physical therapists. Uh, and let's, um, hmm, I think uh, we have a little bit of activity here. Happy to address. Um, okay. Yeah, well, I think that's it, folks. Uh, thank you so, so much for joining us. And uh, a thyroid, it's, it's a big topic. Uh, we can talk about this for many, many sessions, many, uh, many uh, conversations. The bottom line is it affects everything. Uh, and everything affects thyroid. So uh, if you're in a place where you are not getting the answers, as, as we said, talk to a real holistic doc, 417-351-5221. Or if you have somebody local to you who is open to the whole body, spirit, soul, mind, because you are all that. Dr. Shili, anything else on your end? Have a good one. Blessings.